Uh, we started our company back in 2004, and uh, so we were three partners, uh, me and uh, uh, Bruce Moulton and Doug Keen. Uh, so uh, Mike uh, Moses, who is here with us, uh, he joined us as a business development manager, and with all four of us, it's scary, but we had over uh, 100 years of experience um, in, in collectively in ICP, ICPMS, and digestion techniques. Uh, so the um, the company is spread out. We have um, uh, offices in uh, our headquarters in Dallas, Texas, and we have uh, our production in Colorado, and then have East Coast office in Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, another East Coast office in in Delaware. Uh, and we uh, we trying to think, uh, trying to think how we can describe us in one sentence. In we're not just a consumable supplier, but rather a, um, a solution to, uh, offer a solution to your analytical problem based on our experience. Now, with that said, let's, let's uh, move to a uh, topic of our presentation. So the reason we uh, bring this up to your attention is uh, we as a company, uh, our main focus was develop the nebulizers which will be trouble-free or would not clog. And then we've done it for uh, ICP Atomic Commission. So now, uh, when we looked at uh, ICPMS, and especially uh, within recent years, modern ICPMS instruments uh, are being promoted as capable of running high amount of tolerance of solids. And this is achieved by pretty sophisticated hardware, which include gas dilution modules, specifically designed set of cones it's called hdmi or different manufacturers called it you know um, uh, hmi high matrix interface or you know whatever the marketing uh, uh spin is put on this set of cones but yeah they are designed to run uh samples with high amount of tds and uh, what we found out at least you know when, when i uh, uh, look at this i could not find where the nebulizer is addressed because if you cannot get the sample through the nebulizer, then, uh, you know, how we can run 25% of total dissolved solids. Besides of suggestion of using the argon humidifier, which is, you know, it's a given when you run a you know, high amount of total dissolved solids, there was no specific nebulizer that uh, would address uh, this issue. So this is our, um, Optimist Excel, which is nebulizer designed for ICP emission. Uh, that's been on the market for a while, it's patent pending. But the concept of this nebulizer that displayed on this picture is actually very similar in a way to what we used for our ICP MS nebulizer or uh, our Optimist Ion. So what you can see here, uh, it's a non-concentric configuration, what we call, right, where the sample channel, and you see it's highlighted in blue color here, and the gas channel are completely separate. And this allows for the sample channel internal diameter or size of it to be pretty big, uh, standard one millimeter and can be customized up to two millimeters. So when, um, when you get to start to run it, this diagram, a very simplistic diagram, shows you why this nebulizer can handle particles and would not clog. Handling how it all was all solids is one thing. So there is a crystallization uh, on the orifice of the gas, um, uh, uh, gas channel. But the nebulizers clog also from particulates. You see here, there is your sample probe, and typically, um, uh, auto sample manufacturers now providing the sample ID probe with a pretty big internal diameter, somewhere from uh, 0.8 up to one millimeter or even larger. Why? Because the same thing, they don't want you to clog your probe. So then the sample goes in and then it comes to the sample, what we call sample line adapter. Something that connects, it probably goes from your peristaltic pump to the nebulizer, to the back of the nebulizer. Typically, these sample line adapters have standardized at a half to 0.75 millimeter ID. There are even a smaller ones at 0.25, but those are clogging very easily. And uh, obviously when we're talking to people say, oh, my nebulizer, my concentric nebulizer is not clogging. And we start to look why, because there is a 
0.25 millimeter sample uh, uh, sample adapter here that does clogging. So it look almost looks like a filter particle for for the nebulizer. So anyway, here 0.5 to 0.75, and then it goes and opens up and becomes wider to one millimeter. So again, you're going from smaller to larger. If the particles make it all the way here. It will go through the nebulizer and just comes out. That's why it's not going to clog uh, on the uh, at the sample uh, channel. So that worked for ICP emission. So then the question is, well, why don't we take this nebulizer simply and put it on ICP MS? Well, the reason is the nebulizer worked well, uh, and most of them at the relatively large sample uptake rate, generally over one milliliters per minute. No, modern ICP MSs are standardized around 100 to 400 microliters, or 0.4 mils per minute, or lower, right? So then, to make the nebulizer work at this small rate and be uh, provide the good precision and, and um, uh, uh, sensitivity, that was actually not a you know simple task. So this is the requirements. The nebulizer should be high solids capable, handle particular content, don't give up on the uh, performance in terms of sensitivity and precision, but do all of that at a small sample uptake rate. So this is what we had in mind when we were uh, designing it. And uh, uh, in order how to handle it, uh, how to address it, make a sample channel ID as large as possible. You know, that's obviously to prevent clogging, right? But achieve that at the same time with a smaller sample uptake rate. And then the challenge is provide consistency of sample delivery. Because as soon as you keep the sample ID or sample channel, where your sample go in wide open at one millimeter or whatever, and then try to reduce the sample uptake rate, go very slowly at 0.4 mil per minute, then the sample going to get, the delivery going to get interrupted. The, the, the nebulizer going to suck your sample, and then it's going to feel hungry. It still needed supply. That was the challenge. Otherwise, it will not be a patent in design, and, and everybody will have uh, such an nebulizer. So that was a real challenge that we have to overcome. And this is boils down to performance challenges to achieve that precision and sensitivity. So what currently happens is um, if um, uh, uh, some of you could not use the uh, uh, default concentric nebulizer and struggling with clogging, so the manufacturers recommend to put a uh, non-concentric nebulizer, but it will work, it will not clog, but you're losing the, the sensitivity and detection limit. Right, maybe a factor of two or three or more. Okay, so now what we've done, uh, let, let's now move to what we can actually uh, have done with Optimist Ion. So when we, um, here is the table uh, from um, uh, Professor Todorley and Jean-Michel Marie book on liquid sample reduction ICP spectrometry. And here you can see uh, they put in very nice summary based on literature of different nebulizers, you concentric, cross flow, parallel path, and then it comes to the micro nebulizers. And then here there are different parameters. And what we're going to be looking for is this uh, column right here, which is liquid capillary in the diameter in microns, or what we call, I call it sample channel internal diameter, right? So this is where your sample goes uh, through your nebulizer. And we just took this data for a few nebulizers, a few micro nebulizers. Why are they called micro nebulizers? Because of the small sample uptake rate they provide at a very high efficiency. And that's required for modern ICPMS uh, instruments. You can see here that all of these nebulizers that capable of running this small, small sample uptake rate, the diameter is at 200 microns or even lower. Like you see for, for the micromist, it's around 140 microns for HEN, which is the high efficiency nebulizer, it's even smaller than that. And for the uh, optimist eye, you see here, it's way up here 
at one millimeter. So again, one millimeter wide open versus 200 microns the best or even 140 or lower. So that's the key parameter in understanding why the nebulizer that we develop does not clog from particulates. So here it is. It has the sample channel of uh, 0.8 to 1 millimeter, depends on the model. Again, the same um, philosophy or configuration where the gas and sample are separated. And yeah, the, the nebulizer is um, um, uh, patent pending. So here is the closer shot. We just, uh, if you look back, right? So we take this part and flip it 180 degrees. So here the sample is on top. Guess on the bottom here is vice versa, just for um, uh, it was you know more convenient to show. So the sample um, uh, uh, is highlighted in blue, and th the actual difference, or it may be in the scale. So you see the width of this uh, blue bar, if you will, uh, that shows how big the sample channel is, and the, of course the guest channel is pretty small. By the way, one thing that needs to be mentioned that the diameter of the gas channel or now a nebulizer is actually uh, uh, bigger than the sample channel ID on, on the other concentric nebulizers. <laughs> so believe it or not. All right, so uh, let's move. Further. Then we put it you know, on the instrument and that's one of the setup on Agilent ICP that you have adapter. This is the nebulizer. Um, uh, set up there, Optimist Ion. This is an example of another uh, instrument that's uh, Thorma uh, IKRQ, where um, it's cyclonic spray chamber. You see here, in both cases, the black uh, box here is a uh, Peltier cooler. And then on Agilent, it is Scott double pass spray chamber that's hidden behind that. And here it is cyclonic. You'll see the door on this uh, right uh, picture here, the door uh, of the um, uh, <clears throat> Peltier cooler is open and you can see the spray chamber and you can see the tip of the uh, Optimist ion going into the spray chamber. So just to show you an example how it is set up. So then the, uh, we said, well, look at the performance. Like, uh, yeah, well, one thing is to make the sample channel ID bigger, as we said, and, and, and handle particulates, but the proof of the pudding, right? How the nebulizer performs uh, uh, in general. So what we've done is we picked up one of the default concentric nebulizers that offered uh, by um, uh, major CPMS manufacturers. We were not, refer to the manufacturer so not to offend anyone. So it's just a general concentric nebulizer that's used on many ICPMSs. And used, it's called, you know, uh, as an industry standard or not industry standard. Well, maybe it's the time to change the industry standard. But anyway, so you can see here <laughs> the uh, comparison. Uh, the orange bar is the uh, sensitivity for different elements on iron. Optimist ion and the blue bar on the concentric nebulizer. You know, some of this a little bit lower, some of this higher, but it's in the ballpark, so I would say it's about the same, right? So that's a, uh, on the different ICPMS instrument, uh, we did a comparison also, um, uh, apples to apples between concentric and ion. Again, the blue bar is Optimist ion, the orange is the, um, uh, concentric nebulizer, and overall you can see they are about the same. I would say within 10% plus minus, depending on the element. So the sensitivity is comparable. That's that's the what, what we see from this data. And here is the precision comparison again: the Optimist Ion versus concentric. Uh, I wouldn't put, you know, I would hold it against the concentric nebulizer that like blue bar here is higher. Um, then on, on the Optimist Ion, it maybe was particular measurement or particular instrument, but what we should focus on is, you see here number one, right? So the precision is around 0.4%, which is great for both nebulizers, and that's what, uh, again, the main, the main uh, conclusion we have to take from this slide. So the precision of 
uh, Optimus ion and one of the best concentric nebulizers is comparable. I guess that's what it shows. Then we look at uh, what um, uh, other parameters uh, uh, ICPMS users are looking for is uh, double uh, oxide and double charge ratio. You can see here that's on one instrument that was done for barium oxide, which is you know not quite typical use barium, but that's one of the instrument manufacturers are choosing. So you can see here the oxide ratio is actually pretty low because I think was the the cool spray chamber was used with cut double pass, and here the double charge is below two percent, and uh, so it's slightly lower than concentric, but I can say overall it's it's about uh, the same. So here the same comparison for the uh, on the different uh, ICPMS instrument. And this was done with cerium. I didn't put it on the slide as explanation, but I should put it. It's a cerium oxide and cerium uh, double charge. Um, after the tuning is about the same. After the tuning, then the, when the sensitivity is uh, brought down to be the same, so then obviously the um, oxide and, and double charge uh, ratio is uh, um, uh, getting <clears throat> getting to to be in line, so that's w what you see here. Again, everything is way below two percent, and uh, um, oxide ratio here you see it's you know 1.2, 1.6, 1.6%. Uh, here's just a, you know shots of uh, some calibration curves that we have done, so everything looks normal here. Okay, and then we come into the point. Okay, we saw the performance, right? <clears throat> so the performance is comparable to um, default concentric nebulizers uh, on the market. Now the question is, well, uh, we can say all day long it has a large sample ID, but how can we show that it can handle the particles? So this is what we decided to do. Um, we um, uh, get with, uh, with our uh, one of our uh, uh, customer's lab <clears throat> and um, thank you them for cooperation. So they're running ceramics. And uh, we created a slurry using this zirconium silicate powder. It's a pretty exotic material <laughs> to run, but that was, uh, there was no particular reason. It was just what was available in the lab. 180 micron site. You can see here, that's the shot of the bottom of the vial that we put it in about 0.1 gram, and then added 20 mil of just water, which created about half a percent weight to volume um, uh, slurry. You can see here it's almost look like a sand. And then on the next um, uh, couple of slides, you will see some video shots how this first is getting agitated and then introduced into the nebulizer. So we put it in the vial, put it on the magnetic steer, and then, so here we go, the magnetic steer is working. You see, it takes a while <laughs> before uh, the particles is getting in the kind of suspended uh, state, because uh, zirconium is, you know, it's a pretty heavy. Um, so maybe, you know, if you, if you use aluminum oxide or silicon dioxide, you know, it would be looking pretty milky and pretty, you know, um, uh, uh, heavily, but you see that it's, it's a, you see the vortex and uh, uh, <clears throat> how the slurries are generated. So then, so we started to pump it. So in order to pump it into the nebulizer, we have to uh, uh, actually replace the sample line adapter that normally has 0.75 millimeter ID. We replace it with one that has one millimeter internal diameter that normally used for slurries, because as soon as you start to pump uh, this slurry through 0.75, it was clogging right before it gets uh, gotten into the nebulizer. So we have to put almost a slurry adapter in order to get it run. So also, since we did not use a wetting agent, normally it might be Triton X or something like that, that normally used to run slurries, you see here a shot of a, a packet of, of the particles, so they're kind of you know, brought together, packaged it in the segment, and that would be even worst case scenario because they were not spread out. So that was a real, you know, getting this nebulizer, <laughs> putting this nebulizer through the hoops. So here is the video that I can see. So here is the chunk of, of slurry, and then you can see, I'll, I'll start the video, you can see how it starts to move. See, it's moving one, boom, going through the nebulizer, then the next one appears. 
So that is keep going, it's, it's moving. So that's why there is no blockages here. It still keep going, that's a smaller one, going through the nebula. So now it's gonna uh, circle again. That's, that's just a video repeats. Next segment. And one more. All right, let's go in here. Okay, so now that's how this prey chamber looked like after all this abuse <laughs> that we that we did to this poor nebulizer. Um, you know, obviously, uh, none of us in, in a good mind is not going to do it on ICPMS, but this is just for <clears throat> for us to test what this nebulizer can do, so that we can share with you its capabilities. Um, now coming to um, uh, final point, uh, final uh, part of, of our uh, presentation. Yeah, what uh, what we're thinking about? What applications this nebulizer can be used on? Obviously, any simple samples, drinking waters, uh, or you name it, something that you currently running, experiencing or non experiencing obviously is going to be covered. But where People at the end, by just talking to you, this is what we learned, and uh, probably going to learn obviously more when we when we uh, get this uh, uh, product to the market. But this is what we learned. We hear a lot of uh, feedback from people who are running clinical samples, blood that's um, uh, run straight, and it may be previously frozen, as they called blood clots or the um, uh, proteins that are present in the blood will coagulate and will clog concentric nebulizer very quickly. Um, the other uh, application is um, uh, petrochemical, uh, uh, petroleum. Uh, typically, it's run on ICP emission, but now ICPMS used more and more to run petrochemical samples. And if you, if you put something like that, um, and it, it, normally they will also contain particles, and not just because it's it's heavy matrix, but uh, any particular is going to clog, um, uh, also cause you a problem with nebulizer that you have to clean it and all the stuff. The other application is in. Uh, biorefining industry that uh, uh, makes biodiesels and things like that, takes it and refines. So this is the waste oil from uh, like um, um, chain um, uh, joints like McDonald's, Burger King's, Wendy's, whatever. Uh, so this is the solidified. The reason this shot is done or picture is done with these vials laying down on the counter, and you can see that it's solidified because of the high fat content. Even before you can start running it on or diluting it, it has to be warmed up. So obviously, that was a real challenging application uh, for for any nebulizer. Uh, and the other one that's very common is the environmental, where <clears throat> people have to run soil extracts and the and the um, uh, sample look like that with a bunch of particles. So at the, th that's just a few, and of course the single cell, you know, that's also when, when you, the, and the single cell is even more critical, you have to be very small sample uptake rate, and since the, uh, the sample consists of uh, proteins, uh, it will cause clogging, frequent clogging of the, of the nebulizer. Uh, one of the things that we um, uh, we'll highlight in the title of the presentation is, uh, you know, low maintenance, right, increase the productivity. So even, and again, this is the feedback we, we've heard from, from you as our users. Um, the Iranian concentric nebulas works well for uh, different type of samples, but you have to maintain it constantly. You have to clean it. You have to use the syringes, expensive, to purge it, uh, clean it uh, on a daily basis. Uh, this nebulizer we expect, you know, you might not be going to touch for a week or even more. So just put it in and then, you, but the maintenance will be significantly reduced again because of the, the way it's designed and size of the uh, sample channel. As a summary, um, so <clears throat> developed nebulizer offers uh, robust, and with a robust, it's a reliable handling of samples with um, high particulate and high TDS or high salt without clogging. 
At the, but at the same time, as, as I mentioned to you at the beginning of the presentation, the Iran Navy, this is what people are currently running. So if they run to a problem with ICPMS on clogging, so uh, they're forced to use the other non-concentric nebulizers, but they're not designed for ICPMS, like V-groove types and things like that, uh, that would work well on ICP, but when you try to run them at a, uh, 0.4 mils per minute, the performance is getting lost. So yeah, the samples are on, but if you need to keep your sensitivity and precision, uh, this is normally not achieved and, and you're giving up. So here, you know, we don't see any uh, give up on any of the um, uh, performance parameters, which means precision, sensitivity, and the detection limits. And um, uh, uh, the, it, it obviously can be applied to a wide range of applications. Uh, clinical, environmental, petrochem, as anything that not mentioned here, industrial, whatever, anything that you run into a problem with or have to do more maintenance that that needed, that this nebulizer should uh, help you with that. Well, I wanted to thank you for uh, sharing this time with us. Um, I know you're, you're busy and, uh, you know, we, uh, during this pandemic now this is our first experience also running this remotely at pitcon i wish we were all going to be in new orleans and having fun there but <laughs> this is the format okay now um i think it's time for the questions and i'll pass it to cameron thank you sergey uh mike did you have something you wanted to say as well uh yeah oh, i just sorry, wanted yeah. to thank everyone for coming um as sergey mentioned in the beginning uh you know there's um you know obviously we're uh, we want you to think of TSP as a one-stop shop for ICP, but um, but beyond that, we're, we we really want you to think of us as a solutions provider. It's very hard to find places to go where you have application issues or ICP questions, um, and we want you to think of us as you know a place you can go for consultation and um, and we can really help you kind of work through things like that. Um, so we have, in addition to the wide variety of things, we're very excited about the ION because this is addressing um, things people have been coming to us for years asking for this. And um, and I, I compliment Sergey mainly because he's been uh, a few years in development for this product. So we're really excited about the potential. Uh, we hope you'll contact us about it. Thanks a lot.